How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to part two of building a church. Now, in part one, we actually built the entire church, but in this video, we are going to be painting it and aging it and making it look like that old spooky church on top of a hill. And I'm really excited because I've got some cool painting techniques I want to try out. So without any further ado, let's get started. So this is the first section that I have started aging. And I'm taking the jigsaw and cutting away at some of the siding, creating these holes in it. And then I've also used the jigsaw to cut away at this wood and make the edges a little more jagged. But I didn't go too far with the aging on this section. We'll see how I'm feeling on the next ones. I added some trim onto the door using this half inch foam and then a router to get that decorative edge. Glued it on with some good old hot glue. We also got these cool doorknob and door knockers from an antique store. But I won't put those on until I paint the whole door. But I think I may also texturize the door somehow because it's really smooth. And then I'll probably punch a couple holes in it just to age it some more. I just started the painting process and this is going to be pretty much standard for the rest of the church, but it's going to consist of three layers. And the first one is going to be this brown layer. And I put that on with just a spray gun, pneumatic spray gun. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is really just the base coat and there'll be other layers on top of it. But the second layer is this crackle paint stuff. I know you can use glue and I've seen people do it, but that's more specific to this crackle thing that I'm gonna be doing. And then once that dries, it takes around 45 minutes to dry. Then I will be putting on the final layer and that's gonna be the white paint. And then as it dries, it should hopefully crack. And I did this on a test piece and it worked the second time I did it. Um, but this is the first time I'm ever using this crackle paint. So I'm learning along the way and hopefully I'll get it by the end. So this is what the next layer is looking like so far. We're getting some nice cracking in areas. I think overall it's looking pretty good. I'm trying to get some wider cracks and I found that it works best when you lay it out in direct sunlight and then also not going over your brush strokes again. So only hitting one spot just one time. That makes it a little difficult to get some coverage on certain areas, but honestly, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think the variation in crack sizes and location add to the whole thing anyways. So I think it's looking pretty good so far. I haven't added these knockers on yet or this door handle but that's generally where they'll be. But yeah, this is what it's gonna be like for the rest of the church. And then I'm going to add some blacks, browns, and maybe some greens in certain areas, just to darken the white some more and make it look even older. So I wanted to give a more in-depth look at how I am painting the crackle paint. So again, I'm using this Decorative Painters Crackle for latex paint by Modern Masters. And it's a pretty thin consistency, but I'm just using this small paintbrush and getting some of it on there. And then I'm coming up here and just painting it on like you would normally paint any other paint. Um, but I'm leaving some areas thicker than others just so I get some wider cracks and I just go throughout all of this with that crackle paint, and then it takes around 45 minutes to dry. But I found that you don't really have to wait for it to dry. It seems to work fine, even if you let it still remain a little sticky. But I'll go ahead and show you the white paint. Okay, so I've got it laid out in the sun now, and you can see they're already starting to form right here, and I put that down a minute ago, so it takes a second. But I think the most important thing is first getting the paint on your brush, but then going here and trying to only go over the section once. 
going over that one spot just one time and barely hitting the other spots. And it's okay to leave some brown in there because honestly it looks better with that showing. But then, you can kind of already tell it's starting to form some cracks. But I'll go ahead and show you once it forms some bigger cracks as the paint dries. So this is a completely different piece of the church. It's the right window. But I just painted it and I really like how the cracks turned out on this one. I think the reason why they turned out a little better than some of the others is because I used some more of that crack stuff, the crack, the crackle paint, and basically didn't hold back in some areas and put quite a bit on there. And I think that definitely helped form some of these larger cracks. So we got a few more uh, jugs of that crackle paint crackle glue, whatever you want to call it. And I don't think I'm going to hold back in certain areas anymore because we're just going to lather it on there. Because I really like how some of these cracks turned out. So I decided to paint on one of the most wet and humid days of the summer. So the paint is taking absolutely forever to dry. But one of the ways you can speed up the process is with your good old heat gun. Now you want to be careful with the heat gun because you can dry the paint before the cracks actually start forming. So you really want to keep it about like 10 inches away from the surface and just go over some spots like this. And then you'll gradually see the cracks form and get wider and more defined. But in places like this where there's a ton of paint, you want to go ahead and leave that alone and wait for it to dry because if you go over it with the heat gun for too long, it'll start bubbling up and you don't want that. So another way you can speed up the process and get some more defined cracks. So I just finished painting the shingles and I mixed up a couple different browns and I painted them on in a few different places. Initially I had the whole thing painted the one brown color but this gives it some more depth and then I'll age it and kind of blend it together to make it look a little less new. But that's what I'm about to do for the rest of the church. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. So I'm starting the next step in the aging process and I'm using black spray paint, but you can use black paint and a spray gun and then just a spray bottle full of water and it's creating this blotchy effect where it leaves these white places where the water has hit it and everywhere else it it kind of dusts it with that black so I'm taking the spray bottle and I'm just going over it in no particular order taking the spray paint and then lightly dusting over the places and I'll leave it for a second that it dries a little bit. And then I'll just take a paper towel and wipe it away. And you can see that where the water was, it leaves these nice aged places. I think that'll definitely help give it some more texture. I don't know if anyone will actually see it, but I know it's there. I think it looks pretty cool. I got this idea from Van Oaks Props. So go ahead and check him out. Alrighty, so now that we have the black on there, the next step is adding this brownish green color to look like grime. And then I take the spray bottle and spray it on there so it starts to drip and run down and dilute it a little bit. So I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. Alrighty, so I've got this nice gross brown green color on my brush. I'm gonna take it, oh, there's a paper towel there. <laughs> I'm gonna take it and put it underneath the bottom part of the siding where it overlaps. And then I'm gonna take my spray bottle and go back over it and dilute it so it starts to drip down. 
And you can go over it as many times as you want. You can go back over some of the drip parts until you get it to where you want it. But as this dries, it'll start to lighten up. So it will really blend together and look nasty. So if you want some more definition for your siding, you can go back over with the same color in some places underneath the overlap and make it look a little more defined. Ooh, almost dropped my <laughs> bottle. But I kind of like it when it's a little drippy like that. So going back to using the water and black spray paint, I've realized that when you use the spray gun filled with paint and the air compressor, that if you water it down and then try to wipe it away, then it basically wipes all the paint away and doesn't really work that well. But with the spray paint, it dries pretty much immediately. And as you wipe it away, you get more of that crisp dots and blotches where you see the white paint underneath. So it's honestly up to you what you want to do. Um, I did use a spray gun on this. I know it's a little hard to see because I have the brown over it, but they're less defined. Um, so really up to you what you want to do with your dots. I'll go ahead and show you with the spray paint one more time. I think it's just such a cool method. Um, let me get the towel and wipe it away. It's so cool. Cause it's just like invisible detail that just suddenly shows up when you wipe it. Very cool. So as the paint dries, it starts to lighten up because of the water diluting it. So I'm having to go over a few times with the brown in order to get the right look. So don't be afraid to go over as many times as you want because in the end it's going to be dark and it's better to go overboard with some of the colors so they at least show up. But yeah, I'm really liking how this is turning out. I'm starting to do the windows and I'm using this clear plastic sheet that I took off of all the foam before I started working and I saved a bunch of them because I knew I wanted to try to use them for the windows and they seem to be working pretty well. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that they're pretty fragile so you don't want to poke any holes in it and where you put your cracks also matter because you have to still try to tighten it. So when I'm putting this on, I'm just gluing it on with some hot glue and then stretching it out so that it stays taut. And then I'm using some white spray paint and going over and, and making it a little more opaque. And then I'm aging it some more with some brown in the front. But I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like in the front with some backlighting. So this is with just the normal daylight shining through it. And I think it looks pretty good I think it'll look even better once we have the uh, backlighting behind it. I think we're gonna do some orange fire and ice lights. I think that'll give it a nice amber glow. And you'll see it through the cracks and then also just through the opaque window. Um, and I think that'll look good. So I'll go ahead and do it on the rest of the windows now. So I'm finding the best way to do this is putting it on in one big sheet, gluing it on and make sure it's all stretched out and then going through with like an exacto knife and cutting some holes into it and then if needed you can just stretch it out in the back I'm using Gorilla Tape um, but you can use glue as well that seems to be working pretty well alrighty so I'm starting to set it up now that it's all painted and I'm really liking how this is looking. But now that I'm setting it up, I get to do some more fun stuff, like these vines. And we got a ton of these fake vines. And I painted them with some brown spray paint just to make them look a little less fake. And I'm just stapling them on with the staple gun. 
And because we have different sections of the church, you're gonna have to stop on this section and new vines on the other sections and so on so that I can take it all apart once we're done. But this way, we don't have to ever put vines on this again. They're already on there. But yeah, this is looking really good. I feel like Clark Griswold up here, stapling these vines instead of Christmas lights to the church. <laughs> Lincoln, is this your new doghouse? It's done. <laughs> so before I show you the front side, let's go around back into Lincoln's doghouse and show you what this back side looks like put together. And it may not be as spooky as the front. Still have the Mickey and all the stickers for my whole door on it. But I think it's interesting to see how the entire thing is put together. We may hang some curtains here, just so that when the scare actors open the door, people don't see back into here. And then we may paint some of it black as well. Alrighty, so the moment we have all been waiting for, the finished church, woohoo. I'm very happy that it's done. And I'm also happy because it turned out way better than I thought it would. I finished all these vines here, but I think I'll put some more up on the steeple and parts of the roofs once I take it all down. But when we actually set it up for Halloween, I'm gonna put some dead plants on either side just to seed it a little better. And then we're gonna have a mulch pathway that goes in front of it that connects up with the rest of our haunt. But yeah, very excited that this is done. Alrighty, so as it gets darker, I'm gonna throw some lighting on this baby and see what it looks like. So I'll give y'all some daytime and nighttime footage at the end of this video. Yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this two-part series. If you haven't seen the first part, I recommend you check that out because we built this entire church but if you like this kind of stuff, we have a few other videos, build videos and walkthroughs of our haunts on our channel. So consider subscribing and checking those out. We'll be posting some more content towards Halloween. So yeah, happy Halloween, happy haunting. We'll see you guys next time.